Welcome to my Atari ST Nostalgia Chip channel. And uh, this time in this video I'm going to be doing something a bit different than actually the last few times. Because instead of playing games I'm going to go into some serious stuff. Um, I'm having a look at GFA Basic. And GFA Basic was developed by Frank Ostrowski at GFA Systemtechnik GmbH, uh, which is a very German product apparently. And the, the first version was released in 1986, so actually quite early in the ST's life. And in the mid and late 1980s it became really really popular with the Atari ST home computer range, uh, because especially versions 2 and 3 offered many advanced features compared to the alternative. Um, it was really a very mature programming language for its time. Um, especially for the home computer world and it allowed for extreme optimizations for executing speed uh, supporting some direct assembly level calls and you could even add sections of assembly code uh, directly into the basic source code which was sort of unheard of in any other basic dialect anyways and it also integrated neatly with uh, the gem and toss operating system of the atari st so you could use menus dialog boxes and you can actually use mouse control if you want to now, of course, back then, I did not know much about coding because, yeah, in 1986, I was 11 years old. And unlike my brother, who really was into coding, I was more into gaming, uh, to be honest. But even then, I could still appreciate the maturity of this basic interpreter. And I did learn a bit of coding back then. And the ability to uh, put proper structure in my code using this interpreter actually really helped me in later stages of my life when I had to program as a student and later during my work career, even, even if I was programming in very, very different languages then. I mean, when I was uh, at university, I learned programming in Modula 2, I did some programming in Turbo Pascal, and later I learned how to program macros in using Visual Basic for applications in Office. Now, of course, these days, nobody really programs in Basic anymore, but I still think anyone with some affinity to the ST and who wants to go back uh, and, and play with this machine, you should also give GFA Basic a try because I think it's a really great programming language, especially this dialect. It's very mature and I ended up having so much fun that I decided to not make just one video, but actually a couple of videos looking at uh, the many different aspects of this integrated development environment and uh, look at all uh, some commands, uh, very the basic commands of this dialect of Basic. Uh, now, this being the first video, this is just an overview, so I will not really do any programming. Uh, I will mainly go through uh, the interface to see how it works to get familiar with it. Um, so let me start up my GFA Basic program here. It's listening to my mouse. Yes, it is. Now, as you can see, uh, the interface looks kind of kind of text-based, but um, so it doesn't use standard gem menus. Um, they chose not to do it, uh, probably because uh, this is this is just working faster. Uh, as you can see, there's two rows of commands uh, in the top, which are also mapped to, to function keys. Uh, for instance, uh, if I want to test my code, I press F10. Of course, the test is successful because there's nothing here yet. And the upper row, I just use Shift uh, and then the function key. Now, uh, uh, very important, if you're using an emulator just like I am, um, you might have some combinations of function keys uh, or Shift plus a function key mapped to some other shortcut. Uh, which will make it very difficult to use the sub row. So you'll have to reconfigure your emulator a bit if you want to use your function keys. Um, for instance, if I want to, uh, like this is text 16, which means I'm using large text and I can actually switch to, to smaller text uh, using Shift F8. Now it doesn't do anything, but you can see that the menu actually also, the text gets smaller. You have more text in your screen. I prefer not to use that one. Um, but you can also, uh, for instance, with uh, F9, you can uh, flip to your output screen. Uh, it will show the last output of your program if you want to know what happened before you exit it to your editor back. And with Shift F9, you can go to direct mode, which basically means if I do print 2 plus 2, it will just immediately execute the command after I press enter. Uh, and of course, if I print hello world in quotes, and it will print hello world. And if I press, uh, sorry, escape, I will go back to the editor. Um, now, to the left of all, you have uh, a load commands. Um, I will load a program, for instance. Uh, it'll just open a dialog box. Uh, I will enter an, an, an intro program. Now, this is not a very interesting. This doesn't really do anything because all the text is behind an apostrophe, which basically means um, it's a remark. It's sort of uh, a comment in your code. Uh, you can mark your code to, to tell you what it's due to help you uh, work with it. Now, of course, I can press Shift F1 and it will give me the ability to save, to save it as a program file. Um, I can also say I want to save the listing of this program. It will save it as an LST format, which is basically 
just the clear text format uh, and you can actually easily uh, if you want to edit it so some other editor you can do this um, now of course quit quits it will basically uh, end the program I can do a long list which sends the listing of the program to my printer I will not do that in this case because I don't have a printer installed uh, you can make a new one which basically means it kills your current program and it clears the screen and it will let you start all over so don't use this option uh, really don't use this option when you didn't save your work uh, of course there's an option for page up and page down which is quite interesting it's, it's basically if you want to scan your code quickly because uh, unlike pc keyboards the atari st keyboard actually did not have a page up and page down key so uh, that's good to know but it's uh, yeah it's easy to look at your code now of course uh, you can use find and replace which i actually never really use uh, but it can be handy if you want to find some uh, some comment on some marker in your code you want to jump to it uh, you can use the find function um, now the block function is actually uh, quite a special one and i can i can show you but i will first use the merge uh, function because as you can see this is text and it starts with the text this is the second paragraph of this introduction screen so it looks like there's a paragraph missing um, but I knew I wrote, I wrote the first paragraph and I actually wrote it as, as a listing that I can import into this code. So that's what this merge for function is for. So I go to my lists and I have actually intro2.list. I say OK. And as you can see, it has now uh, merged the code into the existing code. So that, that's also uh, quite handy. Uh, unfortunately, I did merge it at the, at the wrong location. So I want to copy paste this to the top. Now copy paste and a clipboard is something nobody ever heard of uh, on the Atari ST in the 80s. So for that, uh, in this editor, they have a function called block. Uh, what you do is you put your cursor at the right location. You go to block start. That's what this abbreviation is for. I go to the end of what I want to paste. I say block end. And as you can see now, it has created a block. Uh, in, in, it has marked this as a block in the code. And I can use the block function to do to do several things with it here. I can hide the block again, which basically is unselect. I can delete. So if I want to delete a whole chunk of text in the code, I can use that function. Uh, I can mark the start and the end also from here. I can uh, list that part to the printer. Uh, of course, I can write the block, which means I can export it as a listing, but only this piece of the code, which is handy for transferring part of a program and importing it into another program. Um, and in this case, I will move the block. So I'll move it to the top. Uh, so this basically block start, block end, put the cursor there, block and move is, is the same as control X and control V in modern systems. So now my text is nice in the wrong place, uh, which I'm very happy about. There's one button I didn't discuss, which is this one. Um, it, it's sort of a part of a menu thing. It can show you the information. Uh, this is version 3.5 because yeah, the higher the number, the better it must be. And here I have an option new names for which I don't know what it does. Uh, and it can go back to the editor. Uh, and you can also choose a dev list. It has four. The default that is chosen is zero. And now it says I can also choose one, two, and three. Uh, what this does, what I found is basically uh, it's, it changes the way uh, it handles commands and variables. Um, I prefer devlist zero, which makes every command I type. Uh, I can actually show you this, for instance, uh, print two plus two, which is my code. In devlist uh, zero, it makes it makes it capitalized. And I think if I choose devlist one, it will only capitalize the first character and just make uh, the rest smaller. But I, I prefer the zero one. Um, so there's some other tips you need to know uh, about this one. Uh, on an ST keyboard, if I want to press a quote, on my keyboard it's here, but it's actually showing an ape tail. Um, but above the two, the ape tail on a normal keyboard, uh, at least a US keyboard, it's, it's a quote. So this is something you need to know on the Atari ST keyboard, they are actually the other way around. So bear that in mind when you're working with it. And also a one num a one key, um, you need is the the help key which you don't have and in the emulator is actually mapped to your page up key um, in the later video i can show you uh, an occurrence where you actually need the help key uh, for some code folding it's a future video uh, we'll come back to that and one other key you need is the more key uh, which is this one uh, this symbol uh, normally is up above the backslash but if i press shift backslash oh now it does okay for some reason that's interesting before I had to do shift alt backslash, but now 
uh, it seems to work. So, uh, but if you if you if it doesn't work, use uh, Shift and Alt uh, in the emulator, and it will uh, actually create that command. Uh, I don't know why it's uh, actually working correctly now. But it didn't do it before, so I may have given this tip for nothing. But um, my text was fine. Uh, my program interface looks fine. I got familiar with it, which is good. So I think it's time to go uh, start with some basic coding, which is something we shall do in the next video. For now, I would like to thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next video where we will start working with variables. Thanks for watching.